190 economies in the World Bank's ease of doing business rankings. And that's Gambia's economy in 60 seconds. All right, welcome back. In case you're just joining us, we're diving into our discussion uh, right now. Uh, Celestine, okay, okay, the lead partner, said is joining me right here in the studio. Celestine, welcome to the program. Well, uh, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. Good morning. Uh, Mohamed Adebola, a member of Ministerial Advisory Council at the FCTA, as well as advisor to the AFDB Special Agro Industrial Processing Zone, is joining me from, uh, from a time, I think, here in Abuja on the phone lines. Let me start uh, with uh, Mr. Debola. Mr. Debola, if you can hear me, hello, good morning, and welcome to the program. Yeah, good morning. How are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. Are you? Oh, I'm well, could be better. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I, I know you're quite busy this morning, but let's just steal a few uh, minutes from you uh, to speak about agriculture. Let me start with you. Uh, I do know the African Development Bank had an event yesterday, special uh, uh, agro-processing zones, what about $300 million and all of that. Uh, still talking about agriculture. 70% of Nigerians, that's 70% of our population, I think, or 70% of our farmers, I would say, are smallholder farmers. How do you think that we can boost productivity in agriculture beyond primary production? Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, and good morning once again. Yeah, um, I'm in the middle of the um, special agro industrial processing rules um, in Central Workshop uh, by the African Development Bank and the federal government. Uh, the SAPV, as it is uh, widely known, um, is yet to change the narratives uh, with respect to Nigerians Nigerians in agriculture as small as or uh, as scale producers, and then the huge poverty gap, and of course, uh, on the employment and so on and so forth. The SAPV um, is yet to address all these issues. Um, it is, uh, it, it is uh, uh, a project that the bank is funding. Okay, that has, that has to do with the creating infrastructure necessary to boost production, you know, and uh, also processing, such that when these post farmers produce their clusters, uh, the produce can be harvested, transported to the FTP facilities, where there will be shared facilities such as uh, infrastructure, such as uh, processing plant, uh, water irrigation, uh, power, you know, and rules linking the facilities, of course, to the cluster, as well as that. So basically, the SCPV is one of the federal government uh, strategies uh, to push the 100 million just uh, poverty program to function. Um, the AFDB is one of these uh, for the federal government, and about six of those have been selected those have respected now to speak uh, across the country. Uh, this workshop is an inspection workshop. On this now, consultants selected are going to move to site to begin uh, the project station work, including, of course, the uh, and so forth. And then from there, we hope that uh, we are going to into the design and, the, and building of uh, uh, the facility um, across the country. Okay, Mr. Mr. Debola, um, thank you at least for giving us a background of what is happening there at where you are now, the event. But I did ask the question, and you seem not to have answered it, which is, uh, if we're talking about Nigerian agriculture, it's still at the subsistence level, it's still primary production. Uh, we're just, uh, you know, farming to feed ourselves. Uh, that's farming to feed ourselves. M meanwhile, even the food is not really enough. We're not really so self-sufficient in food. Uh, what will take us from primary uh, production to secondary and perhaps tertiary production in the agricultural value chain? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The SCPV is here to address that. But don't forget also there are other schemes as we speak to the country today. There's the Anchor Borash Program by the CPN, 
and livestock, um, which are aimed at aggregating farmers, you know, uh, into clusters, so that um, they can share facilities, you know, such as uh, mechanization, you know, and things such as fertilizers and so forth, and it pushes. So basically, what we need to do um, in this country to to help help the game and um, and um, increase productivity uh, is to ensure these programs serve their purpose, um, and then farmers should have access to improved seedlings and stocks, okay, and extension services, and um, all kind of support they need in the value chain, the ecosystem. Once these farmers have this access to all this, and then, and of course, they have knowledge of what to do, you can be rescued that a minus climate change uh, and the vagaries of the weather, um, we will get improved productivity. And so it's so much about the population size into farming, but we are not concerned about productivity. And so part of the SAPD is to bring what you call uh, transformation and cultural practices into bearing, into bearing in all this. What I mean by this is, is simple. Um, it's the institutes and, uh, and centers that produce high quality seeds to be on board so that this one can have uh, stock, they can plant and grow, okay, of good breeds, good breeds that can compete perhaps, okay, if you can compete with apples in Brazil and Asia countries, at least they can uh, have higher yield per, 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 per acreage. Okay? So if you can get all this in place and then uh, the facilities the process also there for the sports key producers and of course the million players, um, you can the rest of Nigeria will uh, have covered some, some good mileage um, in the course of time as we as move forward. Okay. What's key and important is this. Even the little produce, okay, mm -hmm. large quantity are lost to processing. Sorry, large quantity are, are lost to lack of processing facilities. Okay, what you call post harvest losses. Losses, yes. So the SAP, the SAPD, okay, is meant to produce to provide to provide the uh, processing facilities for cotton as cotton industries and for medium and big time players, okay, in a way that if the farmer produces um, horticulture of fruits and vegetables, whether in uh, Redeka in uh, in uh, in uh, Benue, okay, or uh, in uh, Ukari in Taraba, these farmers can have access to high quality stock they can plant, okay. Okay. And the producers, the, the processors can have access to power, okay, as all big package that they can process with, and the different players in the in what we call supply towns, okay, can also enjoy power as IPP to produce, okay, and process. And of course, a uh, good road network to transport their commodities and the fish products to the port, uh, and of course to market either your technically or your export. And what, what is key, for instance, is that the FCTA, where I work for as an advisor for minister, okay, is also key. So the FCTA is establishing uh, one of its kind of a processing zone, okay, in this SAPD with the bank, okay, in global other areas. Okay, um, okay, uh, okay, Mr. Adebola, I think I have to halt you at this time. Let me allow you to go back uh, to what you were doing. I know, thank you very much for joining me. I know you had to leave the event, at least to give us an update of what's happening as it concerns the special processing uh, zones uh, that the African Development Bank is also putting together uh, with the Nigerian government. So thank you very much. I hope to speak to you sometime again. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. All right. Um, Celestine is still with me here in the studio. Celestine Okike is the lead partner at uh, CD. I did ask him, my uh, guest, talking about uh, what will make um, agriculture profitable uh, in the country. Let, let me ask you this question. Is agriculture really the solution to Nigeria's lagging economy? Because you hear a lot of people say, oh, that we need to improve on agriculture. Agriculture will take us there. Agriculture is what we need. But I also know that there are a lot of economies that are not depending on agriculture, and they are so richer, they are richer than Nigeria. So, so is, um, is agriculture the solution to Nigeria's lagging economy? So if you ask me, it has the potential to do that. Mm. So the extent to which it can do that for us depends on how much we support that to happen. And let me speak for the FCT, as he just mentioned. Mm. In the FCT here, in the last 10 years, there has not been an agricultural policy in the FCT. They don't have one. Mm. 
Oh, I wish he was still on the line they so that I'll, I'll take him up on At that. At the last conversation we had with the Secretariat for Agri, they said they, they would roll with the federal policy. The but federal the policy is due. Yes. They, they don't have a policy. They've not had a policy. So if you talk about the agri sector in Nigeria, one of the biggest challenges that we have not gotten down to developing the sector in terms of practical, not theories. If you don't have a policy to develop the agri sector in your state, how then do you do anything? And it's not just for the FCT. Across several states in Nigeria, there are no state agri development policies. You have the federal policy that tell you we want to work with that, but then to what extent are you working with that? And if you don't have your policy, you can't do any other thing. So the agri sector can do much for us, but then are we ready to have that happen? Mm. Some, some issues that are really st staring us in the face are issues such as insecurity, insurgency. You see a lot of farmers are being kidnapped. I have, okay, you know, I can never get tired of talking about this because he used to be a guest on my program, Shadrach uh, Madion. Uh, you know, I miss him so, so much, you know, on the program in terms of agriculture. The wife, of course, they do the business to get agriculture. And I, I, talk, I talk with her, you know, oftentimes, and she, did, she tells me that she, they have definitely a very large farm in Kaduna, but she can't go to the farm because of insecurity. They kidnapped even her neighbor, that farm. So, so these are problems that are staring us in the face, and we're just going about as if nothing is happening, whether because it's not happening to you or it's not happening to someone close to you. The problems of insurgency, insecurity, uh, terrorism, kidnapping, a lot of that. You're seeing even this headsmen moving into villages. In Delta State, for example, in Ubuluku, for example, some farmers don't go to the, ma to the farms anymore because headsmen have taken over. So you see, I had a session in Kaduna State where we met with some person. We were discussing the agri sector in the state. We looked at the historical challenges, the present ones and the future challenges. And insecurity came tops in the future challenges the sector would have in the Northwest. Mm. It's a challenge for now, but they're saying if we don't address it, it will be one of the biggest challenges we would have going forward. So this, which is why I said, look, we have said so much about the agri sector, and it pains me. Mm. We have several events on a daily basis, staple pro, uh, crop processes, so, so many. But the, the question is, at what point are we going to sit back and look at the real challenges we are faced with in the agri sector in Nigeria? You are talking about Delta State or Cardinal State. In the FCT here, I had seen a farm somewhere in between Galadima Roundabout and going down to Airport, airport Road, where cattle were feed on a, on a maize farm. I so saw it myself. Farm. In the FCT yes. here. So if we do not come together to say, look, we want to address the real challenges we are I say finance is not the challenge we face in the agri sector. Same thing for all businesses. Challenge, finance is not it. There are real challenges farmers are faced with. Look at climate change, for instance. Mm. In Anambra State, farmers had to, in 2019, wet planting season, they had to harvest their crops before the due date because the rains came earlier than expected and stayed longer than it should. In Jigawa State, flooding is a big challenge. In 2018, they lost 125,000 hectares to early flooding. In 2019, the state government has refused to publish the data because it is almost two times that figure. In Kanu State, it's heat and drought. You plant, you can't harvest, it's, it, it dries off. But we don't have a policy today helping farmers to address how to mitigate and adapt to climate change. And then you have events where we talk about $300 million funding. But then, do the investment, where is it going to? Because the two things we, we can do in the sector is to, one, improve productivity for, productive for those who are already farming, one, and then bring in more persons into the space. But then if those who are farming are not doing much, are not improving their productivity, how do you get more persons into the space? And then somebody tells you, I got funds together, I borrowed from friends, I started a, a farm somewhere in your state, and one month after, cattle's coming and... I'm telling you, with no remorse, nobody will say and anything. And we have, we have and not. And you are afraid to. It's, we have not. We have, we have not thought that would be a big challenge. So, uh, if you ask me, we need to do two, two things. Look at what the challenges are. Address them holistically. If we don't address them, any other investment we are making will be more mm. like putting nothing on, putting something on nothing. Mm. It, it can't stand. If the key states of Kaduna, Kano, of Jigawa do not begin to make progress, who, who should have state to make it? And I was, I'll, and I'll give you reasons. Any donor program you find in Nigeria, whether it's coming from the UK government, from the US government, from the World Bank, you it's always present in Kano, Kaduna, That's Jigawa for Greek projects. A Greek projects. Yes. And so if we have not seen yield improvement in those states, how much more for states where there are no where, where, where there are little support from both donor and government? 
Now, the agric policy we have in place is due for, for either a review or a change by May 2020, because it's a four-year policy launched in June 2016. This is February, going off, leading us into March. I have not seen any activity anywhere from the Ministry of from Agriculture? In the, in the line of we're either reviewing or bringing a new policy. I've not seen it happen. Okay. We have asked questions. So do we don't wait until May, sorry, April, and we kickstart some process, have some consultants, and they write a beautiful plan for us, and then implementing it becomes a big challenge. You know, for me, it's as if, I know I have about uh, 10 minutes to the end of the show, but I just feel like just closing this show right now and going, really, because... Um, sometimes we need to, to tell ourselves the honest truth. That's the honest truth. I chose my word, you know, because sometimes, uh, whether truth, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> you have different types of truths. <laughs> right now in Nigeria, you know, truth has different coloration. coloration. Give, them give them different meanings. Different yeah. meanings in Nigeria. So we just need to tell ourselves the honest truth because it brought out some issues which I wanted to talk about. The issue of even FDIs, the issue of private sector investment. In, in agriculture. You also talked about issues of uh, bringing more people into agriculture. And that brings me to the question of perhaps the rise of agri-tech, agri-tech companies in agriculture. You've seen the likes of, you know what I'm talking yeah, about, yeah. some technological companies now infusing into agriculture, bringing more people in the space. I can actually invest without even going to see the farm and I get returns on not investment. Not, not to cut it short, I recently worked on a program on agri-tech, how technology is supporting agri. But then, we, before ACTEC, we had ICT for Agri. So it's, it's like we built from ICT for Agri to ACTEC. Only f I think only Ogun State is a st the state government that has deliberately set out to work with ACTEC firms to support smallholder farmers in the state. Other state government are acting as if they don't even know what ACTEC means. But ACTEC is, is, a, is a new trend that can support smallholder farmers because then it simply says smallholder farmers, let's work with you to improve your productivity so that we can give to off the cow market and share profit with you. But then, like I told about the Cardinal program we did, and people said, look, in the nearest future, not, not in the near future, which is even like from 12 months from now, insecurity might triple to much more than it is now. In my estate, I had a little conversation with some, some Northerners who normally would travel home for the wet planting season and come back after a while. They traveled, and within one month, they were all back. When I say all, oh, not necessarily all, oh, but a large number were back. I was like, why are you guys back? Are you not... They said in Zanfra State, the area where they come from, they have to pay a million to get a sizable land to farm. I said, pay to who? They said they pay to bandits and band, band, bandits. Like if you can't pay that much, you have to farm within your community. And what, would they, what can they farm within their community? The land is so little. So they have to come back to the FPT. So each time you hear of bandits either terrorize or kill persons in some northern states, you should bear in mind that most of these persons who have been terrorized or chased out of their communities are traditional farmers. You know, for me, even calling them bandits is like we are softening the issue. And it's still part of what we are saying because we cannot advance more than we are right now. If we, if we don't tell ourselves the truth that we are going to move forward, who are we deceiving? Who really are we uh, deceiving? The thing is that these people have gotten into agricultural sector, we are not producing as much as we should, as produce. As we should produce. See the numbers, inflation is part of it. Food inflation is being affected. And we are all here pretending as if... You see, there's, for me, there is, there is no pretense. I, I, have, I have deliberately said from 2019, I won't attend any big program on, on agri, any large garden on agri, because to me it's a waste of time. We, we can't have these burning issues, and we then we are conveying to talk on issues that are not related to them. We can't make any progress. Now, on the local ja Abuja road, it's almost like a no-go area in the last couple of weeks. Going Someone that I know so experienced so an, an insecurity and, issue and, 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 and just this guy, yesterday. These guys, they, they kidnapped a former DSS director who shared the story about how they moved him from the road to almost 10 kilometers inward. And what we didn't get, tend to understand from that narration is that nobody can farm on that entire stretch where the kidnappers operate. Nobody. And the entire community in Boring where they operate from, no farmer can operate there. They won't let you do that. So people are living the farmland. Look at the FCT today. Go to different places. You find people who are trooping in on a daily basis. They can't farm in their communities. Is it in Benue State? The state we used to know as core agri-producing state for us in Nigeria today, nothing seems to be happening in those states. Even, even though we're seeing um, policy strong focus by policymakers like the Central Bank of Nigeria doing the Anchor Boras program, the accelerated 
um, well, um, yes, you, agricultural you development program. You mentioned the program, Afro-Growth program. A, and lot I, of, a lot of those. I saw, I saw in the news where they said, is it in KB, or KB State that they are taking 70,000 farmers to court who are not paying? Same is in Taraba. Same is in almost every state that I know of. And we, we, we did some digging as farmers in Kano State what happened. They said, look, farmers didn't get these loans. They didn't get the loans? The farmers didn't get the loans. The la people got the loans were not farmers in the sense of the word people who go to till the did, land. Did you, when you did that, did yeah, we, you we report did, The report will be published, will be published uh -huh. in a month or two. No, not in a month, Max. Because if because you are getting they, something like this, did you report to the authorities? We involved? wrote NISA. We did, an F, we did an FYI request to NISA to say, look, please tell us how you manage the uh, how you manage the Uncle Boras program. And guess what? They, they, they got a lawyer to write back and say NISA manages fund on behalf of CBN. I think they call it debenture. So it's a loan they took from CBN. They would pay it back. So to that extent, they are not obliged to give us information. Yeah, they wrote back saying that. But we simply asked the question. Right, maize wheat farmers in Kano State pulled out of Anchor Brewers program in 2018 planting is because one, they said the interest came later than they had they had agreed they would get them. Two, it came at a higher price. Three, the list they sent to you were substituted by names that were not their members. Is it true or not? And they get they got a lawyer to write back. Have you have you complained to Central Bank? Uh, of course, we wrote Central Bank, uh, and of course, they will not always give you a response. They will we not wrote, always. We wrote. Of course, we, 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 we have a history boom from the CBN to 220 billion fund. You okay, drag yeah, these MSMEs issues. Fund. You drag these issues and you know, for me, I'm quite interested in what you're saying yeah. right now. Perhaps we can work on it together and see what happens. Absolutely. Because it's a lot of money. It's just like you said, yeah. it's not just only about finance, but there are a lot of issues that are also facing agriculture in the face. And we really need to tell ourselves the truth, yeah. whether we like it or not. <laughs> Except all of us. 200 million of us will evaporate and disappear from no, this country. There's, and there's it's not possible. There's, there's, there's always a Canada to go to. If you, you know, so cope with the cold. there's a Canada. There's a Canada. Okay. For every Let's problem, see. In, for every problem in Nigeria, there's happens. a Canada too. There's a Trump in the U.S. now that has done what he has done. Uh, we, you know, we have so other countries that we, can, we know we, okay. we know how to adapt and manage. We'll keep managing. Okay. Oh, I think we'll leave it at that. <laughs> Thank you very much, Celestine, Thank for, you, uh, for joining me on the program today. It's not really a joking matter and i'm really not too happy discussing agriculture uh, i remember when my late guest used to be on the show at least in the last 10 12 13 years i've been talking of the same issue and nothing has really it's just moved a little what exactly is the problem but continue to be the best you can be and be the change you want to see i'll try as much as possible to do that in the face of all these odds mm -hmm. i am nancy naji i'll see you all again tomorrow god willing bye now